Hey YouTubers, I wanted to do some information. I wanted to record some information that a lot of people are interested in or if they're going to build LS engines for whatever purpose, especially turbo applications or nitrous applications, everybody wants to know, you know, can I run the stronger, thicker, heavier Gen 4 which is also referred to as the LS2 connecting rods in my Gen 3 engine. Now, if you do a search online, you get a lot of um, a lot of testimonials. We'll just we'll, we'll call it testimonials, where people will say, "Oh, well, I've done it," or "I've seen someone who've done it," or "This guy has done it. Uh, he ran the Gen 4 rods, and he didn't have any problems." Okay, here's where the discrepancy comes. Balance, the engine balance. And the area that cannot be identified to this point in my experience is when GM switched from the Gen 3 to the Gen 4 engines. It was right around 2004. So you will have these, what people refer to as crossover engines, where you'll have a 24 tooth reluctor Gen 3 crankshaft, but it'll have the much heavier built uh, Gen 4 or LS2 connecting rods, which in turn means it has the full floating pistons. So then uh, a lot of people, including myself, thought, well, surely GM would have balanced those rotating assemblies because every machine shop I've talked to, uh, reputable machine shops that aren't just trying to make money off of whoever walks through the door, <clears throat> they say, generally, in a race application, if you have more than a 10 gram variance up or down between your piston and rod weight then you should rebalance your assembly with that said I actually talked to a person who had a lot of machine shop experience but didn't actually own it years and years and years people built small block Chevrolet engines okay I'm sure this applies to Ford, Chrysler, all those too, but my experience in this conversation with this person was about small block Chevy 350 engines. So he happened to have a catalog that covered like, I don't know, it was at least the 1990s for TRW uh, forged pistons. So he had pointed out that it's a common practice for people to have bored the old 350 small block Chevys, you know, 30, 40, 60 thousandths. And when they rebuild those engines, you know, it was not a common practice for a long time to rebalance those assemblies. But his point, which he did validate through the catalog, is that in between a standard bore piston and a 60 over piston, that could easily be a 35 gram increase. Okay, so is it optimal? No, I can't imagine it would be. Was it validated or quantified that, okay, these guys built pistons that were 35 or piston rod assemblies that were 35 grams over the intended weight? and they ran it with no problems? I don't know. Like, I, I don't know that I've heard enough people complain, but if you think about it intellectually, what if that was a cause of problems that, you know, like say people were complaining about, oh, I built this 60 over Chevy and uh, I kept, you know, banging out the rod bearings or it kept, you know, having issues with oil pressure or or whatever the consequence may, it may have been, maybe it's because they didn't balance it. But because people weren't all that knowledgeable, 
about engine harmonics and vibrations and how it can really damage your bottom end, maybe they just didn't know. You know, maybe that was a legitimate lack of knowledge. So what I wanted to show for the first time in a long time was the uh, actual weight of the uh, LS Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines. Okay, now this scale, you have to push the button on the bottom to go to gram. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. We are currently weighing out grams. And I wanted to show what you would run into if you ran a Gen 4 rod in a Gen 3 engine without rebalancing. So, check this out. Alright, so here is a Gen 3 rod from a 4.8 engine. Okay? Now, something that a lot of people don't know is the Gen, Gen 3 4.8 rod on this little uh, area of the of the big end, you'll see the number 121. So if you ever get a whole box of rods and you want to know how to differentiate them, a Gen 3 4.8 rod, and you can see this is not a, you know, this is one of the smaller diameter I-beams, should be indicated by 121. All right, see if we can get this thing to set up here. Because I was weighing them earlier, and they only wanted to set on their sides and weigh properly. So, Gen 3 4.8 connecting rod, no bearing, no insert, no bearing, 617 grams. Sorry about that, my dog's retarded. Uh, 617 grams for a 4.8 Gen 3 rod. Now let's grab a dimple rod. This is a Gen 4 4.8 rod, which I believe has a 4, I want to say it has a, I thought it had an indicating, I don't see a number on the bottom of them. A lot of them do have numbers printed on the bottom of them, but anyway, this is a Gen 4 4.8 rod. Now I want you to see how much of a difference in weight this is. 657 grams okay now just recall that's 657 grams so just this connecting rod is let's do the do the math again here 657 minus 616 what is that? That's like 40. That's just crazy. That's 41 grams difference. That's, you know, how can you justify running, you know, I haven't even compared the weights of the pistons because I'm pretty sure they're going to be pretty close to the same. But that would be a video worth making as well. But think about that. Between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 4.8 rod is 41 grams difference. Keep in mind the Gen 4 rods are heavier than a Gen 3. I mean, I'm sorry, a 5.3 engine because they're longer. Remember, those are 6.275 inch rods where the 5.3 is only a 6.098. So. so let's move on to the 5.3s. This... It's a 5.3, it's a Gen 3, 5.3 connecting rod. Now, just as that other rod had an identification number, these have one, I think it's 143, stamped into the bottom of them. So remember, 121 is an 8, a 4.8, 143 is a 5.3 Gen 3 rod. So let's throw this on there. 612 grams okay so it is four grams lighter Let's see if we can get some consistency 612 grams for a gen 3 5.3 connecting rod 
here is a dimple. This is a dimple rod, which is a Gen 4 or LS2, as some people like to call them, 5.3 connecting rod. Six hundred and forty six grams, right? So six forty six. Now don't forget six forty six. Then we'll deduct our six. Well, see now it's only going six eleven, so it's got to be right in between the two. Hold on. It all depends on. Depends on how you blow on the stupid scale, but you know what I'm saying? You got 611, 612, 611, 612, I don't want to do points, because that's just, you know, see it's balanced, it's like right in between, so let's just do 612. You have to be gentle with this thing. Harbor Freight, what can you say? So you're looking at a good 612, 30, was that 36? I'm, I'm not aware, third, uh, 33. You're looking at a 33 to 34 gram difference. Let me try to read zero this and see if it gets any happier here. So you're looking at a good 33 if not 34 gram difference just in between the Gen 4 5.3 rods. Like between a Gen 4 and a Gen 3, you're looking at a good 33 grams. Good Lord, my scales are not gonna dig that at all. All right, let's zero that. Let's lay it down like this and see what it says. 612, there you go, 34 or I'm sorry, 33 grams difference. 33 grams. So if you're looking at a difference in a 5.3 connecting rod between Gen 3 and Gen 4, you're looking at a solid 33 gram weight increase. To, that's just for the connecting rod. We haven't even touched on the pistons between those two rods makes a huge difference. 4.8 is even worse because uh, between a Gen 3 and Gen 4, 4.8 rod, that was 41 grams. That's just dead weight. 41 grams difference that you're putting on that crankshaft and wanting in a 4.8 application, uh, most people rev those engines way higher, sometimes by at least 500 RPM, higher than a 5.3, which comes, it, it, exacerbates or it, it, it multiplies the harmonics and the out of balance issue even farther so I don't know I mean in my in my experience with engine building I would not recommend just throwing in gen 4 pistons and rods on a gen 3 crank and running it I fully understand that people have done it. I'm pretty sure people will continue to do it, but I I know that it's gonna end up eating bearings. At the very least, it's gonna end up hurting engine bearings. Now, is that, you know, if you've got those engines cheap enough and you're not afraid to pull engines and rebuild them and start over and, you know, if in other words, if you're not, if you're not afraid to pop the engine then by all means, you know, put together whatever kind of time bomb you want to build and go out and have fun with it. But in a realistic standpoint, it's not a smart idea. It's not a well thought out, optimized plan to put, you know, a rod that's that far out. Uh, you know, in other words, the difference in those weights are great enough that that's, that's not gonna be a good idea. You know what I mean? But like I said, people will do it. People have done it. And I just wanted to make a, a real video showing it's not the best idea, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please keep uh, watching the videos. Like and subscribe.